Blog Talk Radio. What's going on, folks? It's your boy Long Beach Joe, and I am back at it. Back at it. Back at it. Again. I'm back at it again, man. Listen, this is a post-game radio show. For those of you that are listening on Blog Talk or anywhere else, we just got done here on YouTube, Long Beach Joe Jets YouTube. We just got done. I'm sitting here with the Savages. Just got done watching the New York Jets take a loss to the Dallas Cowboys. The Jets just lost to the Dallas Cowboys 30-10. to 30-10, to 10, and we're going to be discussing it all the lines are hot. We're going to get to everybody. Let me get the show started. Listen, I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me say this. promote my Facebook page. Everyone go on my Facebook page. All right? Like that page. Also, watch my content on there. Uh, please give me some feedback. Talk to your boy. I'll talk back. All right? Give me some feedback. I want to know what you folks think about what I do here, okay, on the Long Beach Joe Show. I am also on Twitter as well. Okay? Go on over to Twitter, at the Long Beach Joe, at the Long Beach Joe on Twitter. Okay, follow me, I'll follow you right back. I love going back and forth with people on that, too. For those of you that may not know as well, your boy does live stream like I am right now. I'm live, okay? <laughs> Sadly, you know, we're watching the Jets take a loss today, a tough loss. Uh, Long Beach Joe Jets, Long Beach Joe Jets on YouTube. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, so when I post content, you'll be in the know. You know, your boy be looking good, okay? I'll be looking good on there. A lot of people saying I'm handsome. They like uh like my takes, like what I got to say about the team, love watching games with me, and I appreciate all y'all. Salutes all ladies. You know, they say I'm handsome. I'm here. I'm not arrogant. I'm just here. So with all that said, all right, you can also watch the uh or catch the show as well, the podcast on iTunes, okay? The Long Beach Joe Show, the Long Beach Joe Show on iTunes. All right. Uh you can catch the show there and uh listen to your boy. Also give me a five star rating and give me some feedback on there as well. I enjoy hearing about what you folks think about what I do here on the Long Beach Joe Show on iTunes, too. So now it's time to get into it. Listen, this is going to be very quick. I'm going to give my takes. I'm getting to the lines again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. I'm taking all callers. Listen, this was a tough game. This was a tough game, and we knew that coming in, and we were hoping that things would get done a certain way. We were hoping that our defense would be able to come in, step in, and really control uh, the game for us. And that didn't happen today. That did not happen, all right? Listen, this Dallas, this Dallas football team really went to work. Dak Prescott early was cooking. I'm talking cooking. They came out early and got a touchdown on the board, all right? There was one point in this game that Dak Prescott was 13 of 13. He was moving the football down the field. And it wasn't like they were killing us with a bunch of deep shots. They weren't. It was a lot of guys coming out of the backfield, running backs coming out of the backfield, guys running wheel routes, hitting guys in the flat, short stuff that would turn into the long stuff. He would hit a running back in the flat, they would be able to run for 15 yards. He would hit another guy, a two-yard gain that would turn into a 25-yard yard gain. Dak Prescott ended the game 31-38, 255 yards on the football. He also had two touchdowns, all right? Now, one of those touchdowns we'll talk about in a second <laughs> because he was, you know, helped by the uh, – he was aided by the referees in this game as well, which is kind of crazy to watch. But the, one of the biggest problems is we could not get pressure on Dak Prescott. All right? Our, fr- our front four couldn't get it. When we sit blitzes, we would get cooked on the back end, and man coverage was wild. All right? The Jets' defense could not consistently get stops. They couldn't. They gave up 134 yards on the ground as well today. Tony Pollard had 72. That was their leading rusher. But another guy that really went off was C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb had 143 yards today, 143 yards off of 11 catches. Completely insane, insane. So as we look at this situation here, man, we're trying to roll, trying to get things moving and shaking here, and we're trying to make something happen. Now in the second quarter, right, Dak Prescott was really cooking, right? We're trying to make something happen. We're trying to get a stop here. They get down into the red zone, and then all of a sudden things start getting real funny with these referees here, real funny, right? On second and seven, Dak Prescott tried to get it to Tony Pollard. 
There was no gain there. Whitehead was able to get a stop. And then all of a sudden on third and seven, it was a pass. He tried to get to C.D. Lamb incomplete. They call, roughing the passer on John Franklin Myers. Well, I'm sitting here with the Savages, and we're like, roughing the passer? What are you talking about? They pull out the replay. The Cowboys offensive lineman literally takes John Franklin Myers and throws him back, throws him back into Dak Prescott, and they call that on John Franklin Myers. They call roughing the passer. Insanity, right? So then they continue to play, right, because that gives them a first down. We're like, wow, that's insane. That was a terrible call. First and goal for the Cowboys on the, on the Jets' five. Well, Dak Prescott continues to try to push eventually. He gets sacked by Solomon Thomas. Great play, right? Great play by Solomon Thomas. Now it's third and goal for them at Jets 13. It was from the 6th to the 13th. Dak Prescott tries to get a pass to Tobert. Another flag comes out of, the, out of the, the ref's pocket. Now it's pass interference on Brandon Eccles. Brandon Eccles was spotted today as well. He did grab the guy, right? Okay, pass interference. Then they come back on first and goal at the 1. Dak Prescott comes out. Drives around, finds, finds a shoemaker, one of his guys, for a touchdown, and there's a penalty again, defensive holding. Then they called a penalty on Michael Clemens as well for roughing the passer. And we were confused about that as well. We're like, what is going on? How is there two penalties, and how are you calling a defensive, how are you calling a roughing the passer on Michael Clemens? They play the replay again for the roughing the passer on Michael Clemens. He literally hit Dak Prescott as the ball is coming out of Prescott's hands. The refs were just cooking. They literally gifted them a touchdown. They literally gifted them a touchdown. And we're going to hear about that when I get to the lines in a second. Because it was insanity. Now, the Jets' offense did struggle on the day. They did. They were trying to put things together, trying to find a way, especially early. They were dead. Dallas was up at 1.10 to 0. But Zach Wilson was able to make a play early. He was able to make a play in the second quarter. He dropped back on first and 10 at the Jets 32, got the ball to Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson took it all the way to the house for a 68-yard touchdown. So now we're feeling like, okay, maybe the Jets offense can get something rolling. So even after, right, that gifted touchdown, score 7-18, to hopefully we can get some things rolling. The Jets are able to get down the field. Zach Wilson put a drive together before the half, utilizing his feet, running, 15, 16-yard runs to keep the chains moving, making solid throws, looking good. Got us all the way down to Dallas and 16, and then guess what? Kick a field goal, we're in business. So now we're, look, it's 10-18. It's 10-18. Things are looking. Look it up for the New York Jets. We're feeling good, right? We come out after the second half hoping to be able to get a score. We couldn't get anything. The New York Jets offensive line was horrific, horrific in the second half, particularly Dwayne Brown, filled with penalties from holdings to false starts. Makai Becton had multiple false starts. Dwayne Brown couldn't stop Michael Parsons. We had no adjustments for anything. Couldn't get anything rolling. You also had Dalvin Cook with a critical fumble after a field goal was kicked by Dallas, putting them up 21-10. to 10. They were able to get another field goal after that. We could not get anything rolling. And then Boy, when it rains, it pours. When it rains, it pours because the pressure started to come. And you know what started to happen. Zach started to try to play hero ball. He started to try to play hero ball and ended up throwing three interceptions in the second half. Zach Wilson was 12 of 27 on a day, 170 yards, one touchdown, three picks. The first one he threw, he was trying to run to the right side, right uh, sideline, out of bounds, decided to chuck it down the field. Why? Who knows? Didn't see a Dallas uh, defensive back. I stepped right in, picked it off, started to take it back. The second one he threw in the second half. He drops back. He's looking around. Garrett Wilson is coming wide open. He chucks the ball down the field for Garrett Wilson. The safety hooker steps over, is able to jump. Maybe Garrett Wilson would have been able to make a play. I don't know if Garrett Wilson saw him or not. That ball ended up intercepted. The third interception that he threw, Michael Carter, looked to be open. It was just a missed throw, intercepted. Now, Zach Wilson, was he great on the day? No. 
But was he the biggest issue on the day? Eh, I wouldn't say that. Didn't play well down the stretch, though. Killed us. Put us away with field goals down the stretch. And the Jets' defense couldn't get any stops. I was shocked by that today. I was shocked. The fact that it was so many plays, so many short throws out to guys that were able to get yardage off of that. CeeDee Lamb just seemed to be running wide open in our secondary. We couldn't stop him. We could not stop him. 143 yards. We've got to make adjustments. We've got to make better adjustments. It was the same game plan all game for the Dallas Cowboys. The blitzes that we were sending, killing us. Dak picked us apart. We couldn't get any pressure. We couldn't get in there. We had one sack on the whole day, one sack. I'm frustrated. It's only week two. I'm not sitting here screaming that the season is over. That, that's not what you're hearing. But you are hearing frustration because I really thought going into this game that we had a chance to beat the Dallas Cowboys. But I'll tell you what, the Jets offense has got to get something rolling. I don't think this is going to be something that's going to be consistent with our defense. I think our defense is going to be able to shut things down. This is just, you know, us running into a Dallas Cowboys team that has a a solid offense. Then it just wasn't their day. But what we saw from our offense, particularly our offensive line, man, really put me in a – in a bad mood. So we're going to get to the lines again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. I am taking all callers. When you call in, please be patient. We will get to everybody. I am so upset with the referees in Dallas. I mean, I don't know what's going on out there, but, boy, do they got some home <laughs> I mean, come on. Roughing the passer calls, phantom calls, all kinds of crazy stuff. Didn't give us anything. Keep in mind, Dallas's offensive line was holding our defensive front, particularly Jermaine Johnson, all darn game long, okay? We're going to get to these lines, 515-602-9639. For my new callers, do not call in here cursing. I'll get you out of here fast. I'm talking fast. Faster than Dallas Cowboys referees will call a penalty on the Jets. That's fast. That's fast. They're giving them calls all day. Huh. Please give the stream a thumbs up no matter where you're watching me from. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit that notification bell so when I post content, you'll be in the know. Also, share the channel on the stream across your social media with your friends and family. If you'd like to give to the channel, Super Chat is up there. Anything you give to the platform, greatly appreciate it. Cash app is at the bottom of the screen. We get into the lines. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. First caller we're going to. We're going to Val. Val, we're coming directly to you. Ted, Steve, Rusty will come to you in a second. For those of you that do not know, Val, he's a savage. Val, listen, man. I'm sitting here after this 30 to 10 loss, and I'm frustrated. I'm upset with the defense. I'm unbelievably upset with the phantom calls, and I'm I'm confused about what happened offensively here with the New York Jets. Jets lose 30 to 10. Give me your thoughts on what you saw out there, and particularly, what were your thoughts on the way that Zach Wilson played today? You want me to start with Zach Wilson? Yeah, just start with Zach Wilson first. All right, let's go, man. All right. I told y'all, I told y'all, and I told y'all. He played good in the first half. I will give him that. He definitely did good. But like I said, we, we, we've been seeing him for these past four games when it came to the preseason. He only scored one time. The ball is not going to move. He doesn't – I don't know what it is. He just not – he does not flow with the offense. And this is what kills us, man, because the thing is, if the ball is not flowing, the defense has to go back out there. And I said this last week, and we just seen him. He was playing hero ball towards the second half. We seen this last year. This is this the same things that we seen last year. This game reminds me of the Lions game, but not them scoring that much points. But Zach Wilson's performance. He plays good in the first half, and then the second half, if things is not going right, starts playing hero ball. He's there. He's he's. I don't know what he's doing. He he was looking fluid. He was using his legs, rightfully so, to get away from the pocket, and he was killing the the defense because they couldn't stop that because. He's he's actually fast. He he has his ability to run from the the offensive line and the defensive line of trying to get to him and stuff. 
but he's over there pump thinking and he just doesn't have no no plays. And granted, I didn't like the play calling at all because I feel like if you're going to go on a five out, at least have a wide receiver go to the middle. You have everybody going to the right side and to the corners. And Zach Wilson, he just doesn't have that ability yet. He doesn't have that confidence. And he automatically gets sacked. So you're, you're putting him in a bad position as well, too. And, oh, my God, let's talk about Deuce Brown as well, too, man. God. Dwayne Brown. Yeah, I was just about to get there. Dwayne Listen, Brown. I hear what you're saying about Zach. I hear what you're saying about Zach Wilson down the stretch. He was being a little careless. He was, we all know he was just game was starting to really get out of reach at that point because I think it was uh, he started throwing picks when it was like twenty something to ten and the offense was really dead. There was nothing getting rolling, nothing getting going. But let me tell you something. We all knew coming into the game that Micah Parsons was a guy that needed to be highlighted and did not need to go off and go crazy. Michael Parsons had a big imprint on this football game, mainly coming off of that left side against Dwayne Brown, who looked completely helpless against him. Give me your thoughts on Dwayne Brown's performance today, along with the rest of the offensive line, if you like. Let's talk about it, man. I mean, Dwayne Brown, man, like I said, and you, you've been saying this as well, too. Man, he, he hasn't been playing, so we're just going to automatically just start him off right away, and he hasn't got any playing or anything like that. I'm just like, man, this this man looks terrible out there. He looks horrible. He doesn't – he couldn't defend him. I mean, it has to be some type of adjustment. If you know he's getting uh, – he's not blocking uh, Mark and Parsons at all, get somebody else to get out there. Make adjustments. Yeah. Get somebody to yeah. get in there instead of just – Staying stagnant, and this is the thing that I, I don't like about this team. We be we're we're too stagnant, and we're like, you know what? Let's just go out there and just play. I'm like, man, come on, we have to make some adjustments. You want to make a run for this year? Let's make a run because we're going to see the same thing. This is the we have the toughest schedule. That's what I kept saying last week. We have a tough schedule. This so this is not going to get any easier because you think the Cowboys didn't smell this out? You don't think the Belichick is not going to smell this out either? It's going to get bad. Yeah. It's going to get very bad. Yeah. And and I really feel bad because that's why I said against the, the Bills, I was happy, yes, we won. But let's be real. If we had a real quarterback in there, we would have won by like two or three touchdowns. It would have never came mm-hmm. down to a punt return touchdown. So this is the things that are killing me and also other Jets fans as well too because I know the potential of this team. And I've seen the defense. The defense out there is just, you know, they're, they're, um, they have no breaks. Every time mm. the offense get out there, boom, they're back on the defense is back on there. It's just it's, it's crazy, man. It, 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 oh man, yeah, it was bad. I mean, it, it was a rough day, and again, I mean, we couldn't even run the ball as well on the day. So it was like I said, it was really dead for the Jets' offense. They only had sixty four yards flat. on the ground. Keep in mind, keep in mind, thirty six of that came from Zach Wilson by himself. The next yep. closest rusher to Zach Wilson, 36 yards on his five carries, is Brees Hall. And Brees Hall only had nine yards on the day. That's so a ridiculous. lot of people are thinking about that as well. The Jets couldn't run the ball. And that's what we talked about coming in here was like, look, Zach, we know he's, he's still building. He's trying to get his momentum. He's trying to run. But the New York Jets are a ground and pound football team. That's our identity. We couldn't run the ball at all. We couldn't do anything. Could not do anything on the ground against the Dallas Cowboys. But I want to go to the other side of the Jets really quickly before I let you go. The Jets' defense really got chewed up today. I believe they gave away 382 yards of offense, okay? 143 yards to C.D. Lamb. I believe uh, on the ground they gave up 134 yards. What were your thoughts about the Jets' defensive performance today? Man, the the defensive man, it, it was it was pretty bad today, man. And like I said, going off of what I said before, they have zero breaks. But that first that first play of the first drive of the Cowboys, Dak was just hot. Mm-hmm. Dak was came out he thirteen for thirteen. That was that was incredible. And I'm just like, man, we got to get some pass rushers. And of course, you already know Jerry. World, I, I I don't know what's going on with Jerry Jones and. What they got going on with the um with the referees is is ridiculous. Go ahead and thought, talk like about I said, it. Yeah, I, I thought <laughs> I thought we was playing in Boston or in New England. It, it was ridiculous <laughs> of what I seen today. I was like, man, we couldn't even touch Dak. I thought we was playing against Tom Brady or something. Like we couldn't even touch him. We couldn't even tackle him. Every time it was a clean 
obviously we we got to him and we we at least tackled him a second before he threw the ball out. Oh, pass in, um, roughing the passer. I'm like, what is going on, man? Like I, I really yeah. didn't understand what was going on with that situation. And going off of the defense, man, um, it was. Definitely miscommunications on sometimes as well too. I seen us. Mm-hmm. They, they they was very. They was out. Of, you know they had no um, breaks and stuff. They was tired. Um, they was definitely you know hitting us with screens, running the ball, going no huddle. So it was just like on and on. And of course the defense tired out. And this is the problem that I had yeah. as well too. And um, what else? What else? Uh. Yeah, so, yeah, and that, yeah. that was about it on defense. And that three three and out, that three and out was really bad as well, too. I, I definitely wish we would have covered that um, third and 15 or something like that. I don't know why we was – Yeah, yeah, we gave up a third and 15. So, we sure did. Yeah, with the echoes, echoes was um, holding the tight end or something, to, and that's what brought it back. That was bad. That should have been a covered right there. I, I don't understand that yeah. game plan as well, too. Yeah, and, I mean, it was – Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it was wild. Go ahead and finish up uh, quickly. Oh, okay. Yeah, and also I have another problem, man. McCall Hardman, he needs to play. I don't understand why we're not using him. Like, he's he's a guy yeah. that we have to bring into into the game plan as well, too. We can have him as a speedster. You can have Zach Wilson mm-hmm. throw deep to him and stuff like that, and we could actually utilize him. I don't understand why he's not getting no burn because I do not want yeah. Elijah Moore issue. That, and I and I see it coming down the road because I see a lot of guys not getting any touches, man, and and yeah. I don't know yeah. what's going on with this team, man. But like I said, yeah, I don't know. Should have signed I, if it was up to me, we would have signed a quarterback. Or oh, last yeah. week, Gardner Mitchell, Jacoby Brissett, Teddy Bridgewater would have been one of my guys that I would have been trying to go and get. And we should have been. Uh, and like I said, we should have been registering this man Zach Wilson for about a year or two. Because he obviously he's not ready. We're throwing him out there in the fire, man. And again, this is a well, tough I, schedule. Okay, listen, ahead, I, I hear what everybody is saying, and listen, I hear you, Val. But a lot of those names and those guys, I don't believe, are going to make us better than what we are right now. Keep in mind, be those guys will have to come in. They have to come in, learn the offense. Not only just learn the offense, but build chemistry with guys as well, and know exactly what's going on. That's asking a lot. If the Jets truly That's thought true. that they could, I'm telling you, if they really thought that they could get better than Zach Wilson, unless Zach Wilson just completely destroys this season, I don't think they're going to move on from him because they've already said it. They've already done it. Tim Boyle is the next guy up. A lot of those other guys, and, uh, it's a lot of names and a lot of guys we can go after, but I don't think they're going to do it, Val. I don't think they're going to do and it. And um, Tim Boyle was kind of struggling in the preseason as well, too. So I don't even understand. Yeah. Like, he's not even real backup as well, too, man. It's like, if yeah. you look around the league, they have real backups to these quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. And Tim Boyle, I don't think I mean, he's like a, a number two to me. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it, it's wild, Val. It's wild. But we'll keep talking about that. I got to slide off because I got other callers. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, all right? Yes, sir. All right. Have a good one, man. All right. We're going to keep getting to these lines. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We're taking all callers. Please be patient. We will get to everybody. trust. Next, I'm going to my guy, Ted, man. Ted, we're coming directly to you. For those of you that do not know, Ted, he's a savage. <laughs> Okay, I want to thank you for calling in. But before we let Ted go, okay, because he's going to bring us the takes, yes. let me address the big, 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 big donation, man, from Jay Johnson. <laughs> I'm talking the big, 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 big donation from Jay Johnson, man. <laughs> Jay Johnson says, rest on the Cowboys' payroll. <laughs> No I mean, doubt. Look, I don't want I, I don't want, you know, uh, the NFL coming after me. Okay, I just take the calls and I listen to the people. But if you would like to say something about that, Ted, and salutes again to Jay Johnson with the big donation, if you want to say something about the cow about the referees and what you saw today, give me your thoughts. Do you think that those roughing the passer calls were legitimate? Do you think that the Jets may have gotten worked over? Give me your thoughts. Hey, Joe, another happy uh, post-game show, of course. Um, I happened to watch the game. I happened to watch the game with a Cowboy fan. Um, 
let's just say this. The biggest – can you hear me okay, Joe? Joe, can you hear yes, me? Yes, I can. I can hear you. Oh, yeah, I saw you. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. The the biggest thing that I, that I saw that really – the first thing that I saw that was critical was the Jermaine Johnson hold. It was a blatant hold. It at least cost yeah. us a touchdown. I mean, Michael Clemens hit on Dak Prescott. It was a clean play. Even if – even the Cowboy fan next to me said – it's a clean hit. If we can't hit the quarterback, Joe, this, we're lost, Joe. We might as well just yeah. fair catch the quarterback. Don't even hit him anymore. If we're gonna, if we're gonna not return kicks anymore, like you know, you can fair catch any uh, kick return. Why don't we just do it to quarterback? Don't even touch him at this point. Yeah. I mean, it's silly. It's silly, Joe. Yeah. Joe, one of the biggest plays, real quick, if I could just, if I may, just a couple of points. Go ahead. One of the biggest Go ahead. was obviously the Sauce Gardner pick six that was not a pick six. Yeah. Because that would have given yep. us the lead. I mean, I don't know if Sauce – Sauce doesn't seem to be, in my opinion, quite sh- as sharp as he was last year. I mean, mm. let's just say that. He would have caught it nine times out of ten. And the first game, you know, I know, I know he's facing digs. He's facing a tremendously – Good receiver. He should have had that pick six, Joe, nine times out of ten. And the horrendous mm-hmm. Jeff Albrick non-adjustments in the game. And I said to my friend next to me, dude, C.D. Lamb is a game wrecker right now, and he shouldn't be. You know, mm-hmm. that guy, double team him. I don't care what you do. Let somebody else beat you. Let Gallup beat you. I don't care who beats you. But don't let that guy run yeah. loose everywhere in the in the defensive secondary. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, listen, Ted, you, I mean, you're spitting fire right now. CD was literally running all over the place, wide open. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it was it was very strange to see that. I don't think I've seen yeah. that since, again, this Jets defense is the, one of the top defenses in the league. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't seen that, you know, in a, in a while. That's like some old Jets mm-hmm. stuff where a guy that yeah. clearly needs to be identified is like by himself with nobody – within like almost five yards of him, just chilling. And you know what else killed me as well, uh, Ted, Mm -hmm. was Mm -hmm. guys that were coming out of the backfield, catching the football in the flats, and turning those short throws in the 20-yard game, 15-yard game, first down. It was the same thing over and over and over again. What are your thoughts on that? And also, are you shocked that we only got one sack one sack on the day against Dak Prescott. I, I attribute some of that uh, to fatigue, defensive fatigue, Joe. That defense was on the field forever. I mean, they just mm-hmm. – how many? How much defense can you provide? Uh, I would imagine the time possession was like 35-25, even if that, maybe 40 minutes they had the ball, Cowboys. I don't even know. I didn't mm-hmm. look it up. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, the Cowboys have a top-level offensive line. Even with Chuma and Doga, yeah. they have a top. They have a yep. top line, Joe. Dak had plenty of time yeah. to do whatever he wanted to do. Um, you know, I, I have to tip the cap to them, Joe. And 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 yeah. the Micah Parsons thing, Joe. This guy's a game wrecker. No one can block him. You can't blame Dwayne Brown for not blocking Parsons. You can chip him. They did what they could, Joe. We couldn't run the ball, mm-hmm. so we figured out one thing that worked: that was spreading the ball out and trying to make a play. Okay. The the thing and the, the other thing that worked was Zach scrambling. That's the only two things that work, and that's what you wanted out of Zach anyway. That's kind of how you wanted him last year to manage the game, which he didn't do under Mike Lafleur. He basically just mm. went rogue and started throwing the ball everywhere when things weren't open. And at the end of the game, mm. Zach Wilson he was just making a play. Joe, none of that game was on Zach Wilson. None of that game was on Zach Wilson. Okay. 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 Most okay. of it was on and or so I mean Micah pick, Parsons, you're not gonna block that pick, guy. I'm, you're I'm not gonna, gonna play devil's advocate record. here, Ted. I'm Go gonna ahead, play Joe. devil cabbage advocate here, Ted. Even the three picks, you're going, you know, hey, look, he was just trying to go out and make a play. I want to get your thoughts on that because you said none of it's on Zach. So even the three picks, oh. like, what are your thoughts about that, Joe? If we can't run the ball, like you like you said, the proof is we could not even run the ball more than. I mean, Brees Hall's losing negative yards, okay? So we tried anything that could work, and the only thing that worked was spreading it out 
and throw and making plays and basically trying to duck Michael Parsons and having Zach either run or make a throw. That's the only thing that worked. If we had a if we had any kind of running game, I bet you Zach would have played wouldn't have had as many picks. But they all knew we couldn't run the yeah. ball. They made us one dimensional, Joe. They made us one dimensional. Yeah. So all we could do was throw or have Zach run. That's easy. I mean, if you know that's coming and you've got a pass rush like that and Zach has three seconds or two seconds to get back there and make a decision, who's going who's gonna to handle that kind of pressure? Daniel Jones couldn't handle it. Mm. He certainly couldn't handle it okay. either. I, 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 Joe, I can't mm-hmm. blame Zach Wilson for any of that. And I can't blame, blame Dwayne, Dwayne Brown. Who's going to block Zach Wilson? He's like, he's Look, like Ron Taylor. I, here's Jr. the deal. Listen, yeah. and I hear you, okay? And I don't, yeah. you know, look, that that's that's a big name. Look, Micah, Micah is phenomenal, and, and I think he's, yeah. I think the world of him. I think he's a great player, but the yeah. way Dwayne Brown looked today was awful, and it wasn't just, it wasn't just the fact that he struggled with Parsons. It was also the penalties that he had as well that were hurting us. The penalties along the offensive line hurt us as well. So a lot of the pressure that was coming from his side, it was like ridiculous. Dwayne Brown is still a veteran tackle. And we all knew coming into the season that we were going to have to depend on him because he was the only guy that was the answer to the left tackle position. They didn't, nobody right. wanted, or it seems as nobody wanted to do anything else but wait for him to come back. And nobody wanted Makai Beckman over there either because he was pretty much, he was only allowed to play right tackle. And I talked about it. We, we talked about that constantly this off season. He never had a chance mm-hmm. to do the left tackle position. From the jump, it was mm-hmm. told he was a hard out. Right? Dwayne Brown's a hard out and all this. No. Dwayne Brown came out and stunk today. He did. And this is not the first time mm-hmm. he's looked bad. He looked bad in the first game, too. He didn't look good in the first game. He struggled. Unfortunately, struggled this is his preseason, you know, Joe? <laughs> that, that, that's, the, that's, that's the problem. And that was my big concern mm-hmm. coming into the season with him. Yep. Because while everybody was telling me, and Ted, you were here, we did shows, and I said, listen, this guy's coming off of a shoulder surgery. He has not played all off season. How are y'all so sure that he's just going to come into the season and just be that 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 cog that we need? I kept telling people, y'all talk about him like he's Trent Williams. He's not that. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he's garbage, mm-hmm. but he's not Trent mm-hmm. Williams. He needs to like we need to ramp up, or we need to have another option. I mean, the only other option really is Billy Turner, and he ain't, he didn't look good in preseason either, and neither did Max Mitchell. So now there's mm-hmm. big questions because I understand, okay, let's just say Michael Parsons this week. So what was the excuse last week? Because he was trash last that week. That was too. his first game, he Joe. Struggled. I would say it was his first game, to be fair. Well, damn. You I mean, know, not gonna, really having a preseason. Well, well okay, so then what are we going to do, Ted? Because we play the Kansas City Chiefs that have good pass rushes this year too. We also play the Chargers. Yeah. We play the Eagles. We play a host of football teams that have good oh. defenses with great pass rushers. So what's going to be the excuse then? What's going to be I the excuse wouldn't have one, the Joe. Eagles I wouldn't. and we got Carter? Go I ahead. Gotcha. Oh, go ahead, yeah, Joe. I'm I'm just, I'm just I'm, I don't want to talk over you. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm just asking, like, what is going to be the excuse then when we have those guys lining up against us? I understand. I I wouldn't make an excuse then, Joe. I would just say, hey, yeah. you know, what, what, the Buffalo game was his first game. This is Micah Parsons. The guy is, is a potential Hall of Famer. And let me say this, Joe. The Cowboys, that that's a serious team to deal with, okay? Oh, if yeah. they go out and they oh, go yeah. – I, I mean, if they come out and beat San Francisco, which I think they might, I mean, that's going to be like a, like a preliminary playoff game <laughs> That's in a couple mm-hmm. of weeks. Um, you know? We didn't have much, you know, they have a better quarterback. They have a better pass rush, obviously. They may have a better offensive line. That's what, you know, mm-hmm. that's what determined the game. Yeah. So, I mean, I hear you, Ted. It I'm is just, what it is, Joe. Yeah. yeah. I hear what you're saying. It's just like, man, I understand, as the, you know, you said the first game. Listen, Dwayne Brown's a veteran. He's been in this league. He's, he's sure. got to look better than this next, next week. He's got to. Because the first two weeks, been up and down. But before I let you go, Ted. Yes, sir. Uh Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers did an interview with Pat McAfee recently, talked about the possibility of him, he left the door open, to possibly return this season from the Achilles tear that he has. What are your thoughts on that, and do you, do you really think that's realistic? Do you think that he'll really be able to do that? I, I want to get your I thoughts. I don't know, Joe. I really think he's trying to psych himself up. He's probably in a funk 
over this. He's probably okay. cru- he said he was crushed. He said he was crushed, Joe. He's trying to give the team some yeah. hope. I, I he bought a hyperbaric chamber, you know. Um, I don't know, Joe. I don't know if he can come back. But let me say this, Joe: if Miami loses tonight, which I think they will, every team is one and one in the yeah. division. So mm. Chiefs are one and one. Bengals are zero and two. I mean, it's not you know, things are up and down in the in 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 the, in the AFC right now. So Chargers are Absolutely. zero and two. We play the Chiefs. Yeah. You know, the Chiefs didn't exactly light it, light it up today. Couldn't even score against Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Joe, it's just, I mean, we, it's tough, man. It's tough to get smacked <laughs> around, but maybe we needed it. It's tough. Who and, knows? And I want to be. I want to be. Yeah, and I want to be clear to everybody. I'm not throwing in the towel in the season, but you know, mm-hmm. we got to clean mm-hmm. things up. But Ted, I got to slide yes, off. I got other callers. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you. You know, I like talking to you about the All right, football. Joe. Thanks, Joe. All right, Take you have you, a Joe. good. One. You have a good one. We're going to keep getting to these lines, 515-602-9639, 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We're taking all callers. Next, I'm going to go to my guy, Rusty. Steve G., I see you in the building. Other callers, hold on. We'll get to everybody. Oh, Listen, Rusty man. Is in the building. For, for those of you that do not know, Rusty <laughs> is a staff. Love you, Joe. Love you. <laughs> Rusty, listen, I know you're mad. Please don't curse. <laughs> I yeah, almost, I know. I got you, know, you Sam. I, I got I you. I understand. Yeah, that's, that's, why I, I, that's why I was in the chat. I was, and I don't mean to cut you off saying it real quick, but that's why I was yeah. like, yeah, I'll give a call in. I, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Rusty, <laughs> tough loss today. New York Jets lose 30-10 to 10 to the Dallas Cowboys. I want to start with the defense with you, man. Give me your thoughts yeah, about what please. you saw from the Jets' defense. Gave up 30 points. Gave up uh, – I think over 300 yards of total uh-huh. offense, over 100 yards uh, running the football as well. C.D. Lamb had yes, 143 sir. yards by himself. I mean, what were your thoughts what you saw from the Jets defense? We only got one sack on the day. <laughs> yeah, it, it should have been six. And uh, was it Todd Ted who called him prior? Yeah, Ted. Yeah, he, yeah, he, that was the last yeah Ted. Yeah, he, he pretty much nailed it, lost me at Brown. But, you know, the guys in the – you know, he's a good savage. And, but, uh, mm-hmm. dude, it, 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 <laughs> oh, can you ask me that question again? Sorry, I just got so much fury in my brain. <laughs> can, can you say me? <laughs> I'm sorry. Jets defense, oh, the Jets defense gave up 30 points today. C.D. Lamb had 143. Yeah. We gave up over 100 yards on the ground. What were your thoughts about the breakdowns that you saw today from the Jets defense? We were – the way that I see how that, like, our strategy in a way, you know, with Ulbrich and Salah is it's like give them, you know, three or seven on the first drive, adapt to it, and then clamp down. And when we clamp down, um, the refs were like, yeah, no, uh, you, you're, <laughs> you're, um, <laughs> you're, you're not allowed to play football. Um, you're, you're, you're allowed to like square dance as an offensive lineman against the Jets defense, and like, <laughs> and going back to it, like what Ted was saying too, man. Like, yo, did you see? Did you see JJ's cape? It had a Dallas star on it, and there was no yeah. call. And that was just yeah. the the tip of the Rick, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it was. Yeah. It, 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 it was. It, I, that that was just blatantly bad, and it, it just gets per, it just gets so. Oh, that, that's what it was, and that's what I think it was also. Now, I, I think we just got so basically like dumbed down with the refs. You know, us constantly getting hold held, refs just being like, rrr, rrr, you know, looking at a butterfly that doesn't exist on artificial turf. So God only knows what they were looking at, and. It, and then, and then with Sauce, man, like you drafted number four, I love him, and but at, if you're not gonna get a pick six, at least bobble it, but then catch it. Like that's a that was huge. And uh, no, that, that I, was, I think he's got to find that would have put a us up. More, but, uh, yeah, yeah, that we were, put us we up were, dude, we were definitely. Their, I believe they scored on that drive. That would have killed that <laughs> drive too. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was. Yeah. That, that was tough. Oh. That that was tough watching the uh, drop the pick the six again. Yeah, Dak Prescott dropped back, didn't even see him, and chucked it up there. And at the last second, you could see that Dak was like, oh, he was regretting the throw. And we thought that uh, 
that that Sauce was going to be able to grab that and take it the other way. There was nobody in front of him. He ends up dropping it, and uh, you know Dallas ends up going down the yeah. field and scoring on that. We, now I, I hear what you're talking about with a lot of the things that we saw out there, right? The defensive kind of breakdowns, the non-adjustments. But what were your thoughts about Dallas's strategy against us offensively? It seemed to be that their strategy was just get get the ball out quickly to guys in the flats. They ran a lot of quick early, no huddle stuff, to really kind of gas us. And then it was just get the ball out to guys in the flat and then let's have C.D. Lamb motion to the slot and kill the Jets. What were your thoughts about that? Were you surprised that that actually worked? Because it wasn't like they were throwing 50, 60-yard bombs. Everything outside of the stuff that got yes. to C.D. Lamb when he was wide open, everything was short and then it turned into long games. Screens, mm-hmm. guys coming out of the flats, you know, quick, quick passes, you know, out on the edge that where guys would take the ball behind a line of scrimmage and then take off a rough shooting yard. What were your thoughts about the Jets not being able to stop that type of game plan? Infuriating with not adjusting. And then, too, at the same time, like, there was no holding call. Like, wh- wh- That's a fact. There was, dude, like, we were running – it's we were we were crossing and so, and it was just jerseys people like you see <laughs> you you seeing shoulder yeah. pad caps and it's like oh what yeah. happened I I, I, I in, in oh it, it's yeah it, it's it's <laughs> terrible in that way I it really is yeah. you, you can't really look past yeah. that but then mm-hmm. when I don't, I don't know, man. It's just, it's like the sh- we got the shin kicking of a lifetime to where it's mm-hmm. like, all right, when we shin kick back, it doesn't affect them, but they're allowed to use steel toes when you're not allowed to. It's like what? Yeah. And, the, and then the, and then, the, <laughs> and then, and then the refs, they start calling it once it's a blowout. Like, hey, yeah. I, I, I'm, you know, we. You know, if it flies like a duck or if it flies like a plane, it's usually a plane. And mm-hmm. when you're doing that and then all of a sudden you start calling it at the end when it's already 30 to 10, like, yeah, what? That's – And, that, and, and, that, know, and that's, what I, that's what I want to talk about with you as well, okay, because at one point it really – especially coming out after the second half, the Jets' offense really just couldn't get anything rolling, couldn't get cooking. What we were you talking allowed. about the lack of offense? <laughs> well, you talked about the lack of <laughs> offensive production in the second half, particularly, right? We couldn't run the ball at all. What, were you, what, what did you see there, man? What, why do you think there was so much pressure on Zach? Do you blame Zach for what you saw uh, from the offensive output? Or where do you put the blame squarely? Was it the offensive line? Give me your thoughts. I don't put it on Zach. They put Zach into the corner to where, you know, he had to do the plays at the end and everything. Zach was, just, Zach was chilling and killing. He was. Mm-hmm. He was a, you know, he was about to start doing his thing thing. But man, Dwayne Brown, and I, I, can we can we just put Beckton over there? Seriously, because mm. honest to God, I, I, you know, I I think our raging Cajun could hold up at right tackle. Put put Beckton over there at left. What like? Mm. I understand we want to keep him, you know, next to L, to AVT and everything, but. We we got to win games at the same time. We already lost, you know, A Rod to his thing. Minus, you know, I understand it was him having to do that type of play, both him and the field. Mm-hmm. And then he he was our cancer today, man. It was that and the lack of yeah. adjustment. That's what I'll say. Yeah. And yeah. also I mean, too, where's our burner receiver? Mm-hmm. Why wasn't he on like flag wrap? on the opposite side or right next to where Wilson is, so you have to make a safety choose. So, like, yeah. go ahead, pick pick a pistol. You know, you're going to end it pointing it at yourself anyway. Yeah. I don't know. yeah. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, I'm I was sorry. shocked I was today. Just... I mean, no, I was shocked today. Miko Harmon only had one catch for six yards. I'm oh, wondering real. why he's not being utilized more within the offense. I, Can I don't he win the either. Super Bowl? I don't know either. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, I, but I, I, I don't know. the Super Bowl, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't understand what's going on or why he wasn't utilized more within the offense, Rusty. But before I let you go, Aaron Rodgers just recently did a, uh interview oh, yeah. with Pat McAfee and left the door open to possibly return this season from the Achilles injury mm-hmm. that he suffered, the tear that he just suffered last week. 
Do you think that's yep, realistic? Yep. And do you have concerns that he could possibly push himself and maybe re-injure it if he comes back too early, you know, or earlier than he should, uh, possibly maybe later on this season? I'm very happy you asked me this question, but I, I thought you weren't going to because you worded it different with uh, Todd, Ted uh, Pryor, but he, his uh, <laughs> dude, that bio brace thing is freaking amazing. It really is. It like mm-hmm. literally grafts grafts to you, and it is a super speedway like bridge thing. And mm-hmm. at the same time, how Aaron is, but I I, I guarantee you he's going to go get stem cells, and he's going to get that mm-hmm. shot into him. He's going to fly to Panama, mm-hmm. Colombia, and do it the right way, just like how Peyton did it too. And a lot of the UFC mm-hmm. fighters and every you know all those types of combination with mm-hmm. that. I think he's back by December. You know, like late Ooh. December, but I think he's back by December. I really do. Like okay. the way his, because the way he was talking about it, I didn't know about that. You know that bio brace thing. You know, like mm-hmm. I started looking into it after you know all the other things came up, but I definitely knew about the stem cells, and that's that'll mm-hmm. cut an Achilles down to you know that cuts it almost in half in a way. And then if you can do that yeah. bridge and you combine it with the stem. <laughs> I think we have a yeah. shot, man. Now, let, let, me, let me break this down for those, for those that are listening because they don't know about the bio brace thing. The bio, so basically what oh, the bio brace is, for those of you that are listening, it's a brace that can kind of uh, take the place of your Achilles and hold it in place and allow it to heal uh, while you can still utilize the brace as kind of what the Achilles would function as, all right? It's kind of like if you were to put your arm into a sling, right? You can allow your arm to chill. It doesn't, you know, roll around and lag around and drag as it's healing from whatever broken bone, you know, that that's happening with your arm. It's just kind of like that. Yep. But it allows you to And it lets the blood flow as like a super highway Yeah, it lets the blood flow itself. through it. Yeah, and also it's the stem cell stuff, just to break this down for people yeah. too. People do is they take stem cells. They call them like dummy cells. And they just basically, you know, put it in a certain area to heal up. And those cells, they can literally, I don't know how they do it, but medically they figure out a way to tell the cells to just be whatever it is that, you know. Regenerate. Yeah, regenerate whatever area that they're putting it into. So if they shoot an Achilles, they they scientifically tell the cells, you're an Achilles cell, that's what you do within his body, and it goes and regenerates quicker. So that's how that works. I wanted to break that down for people in case they were confused about what was going on here. So. It's Heck interesting. yeah, Joe. You killed about, the fam on that. He left it. <laughs> he left the door you open. Did, man. You he left did, the door man. open. He, yeah, he left the door open again in the, again in the Pat McAfee interview to possibly return this season. Maybe if the Jets make the playoffs, we'll see what happens. I, I don't know. I don't want him to rush yeah. himself back and get hurt. He's 39, though. Yeah. I will say that. So I don't know if he'll be back. But listen, Rusty. I got to slide off. I got other callers. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, all right? Absolutely, Sam. Salute to you and salute to the fellow savages. We'll go kill the Patriots. This is not the end by far in any means. Let's go Jets. Oh, no, it's no, it's not. No, it's not, man. It's not the end at all. We're keeping into these lines. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Okay, GVH says LBJ just became Dr. Bill Nye. <laughs> no, you know, your boy, I know some things, all right? <laughs> I know some things. We're going to keep getting to these lines. Again, the season's not over, folks. I just know people are frustrated, and I'm here to listen, okay? <laughs> now all the savages calling me Dr. Joe. Here we go. Dr. Savage, the savage doctor. Here we go. We're going to get back to these lines again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We're taking all callers. Next, I'm going to go to my guy, Steve. Steve, we're coming to you. G, you're next. G, I see you in the building. New callers, hold on. We'll get to you in a second. We're going directly to Steve. Steve, salutes. I want to thank you for calling in. But before we let Steve even talk, just know he's a savage. <laughs> Steve, we're sitting here after a loss to the Dallas Cowboys, 30 to 10. There's a lot of frustration. People are angry. All right, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm upset. I wish we would have played better, 
but, you know, it is what it is. It's in the past now, right? Give me your thoughts mm-hmm. about what you saw from the New York Jets out there defensively. I was a little shocked that we only got one sack on Dak Prescott. I thought we would have gotten multiple. I'm a little shocked that C.D. Lamb had 143 yards against us off 11 catches. Give me your thoughts, man. Hey, Joe. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on your show tonight, man. It's, it's great talking to you, you know, talking about this team. You know, l- let me just say, this loss is not the end of the world, you know, like for Jets fans. I mean, listen, obviously the team did not play very well today. But the one thing about this game was it was a non-conference game. So, obviously, this wasn't a game when it was like a divisional game or a team that's in our conference. But the thing is, Joe, despite the fact of of losing 30-10 to to the Dallas Cowboys, you know, going into this game, I'm going to say something right now. Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs came to play in this game today against us. Like, like, like Micah Parsons was all over the field. And I will give Micah Parsons credit. He is an unbelievable player. And, you know, it shows, like, why the last few years, why he's been one of the top defensive players in, the, in this league. Now, going to Zach, you know, the beginning of this game looked pretty good. You know, he, ha- he had some very nice throws, obviously. The nice 68-yarder to, um, to Garrett Wilson which was probably his best pass of the whole entire game. I thought that was a really, really good pass. I was even impressed with the fact that even when we were down 18-7 to seven with under two minutes left, Zach did put on a very, very nice drive with two minutes left to go. He got the Jets down the field. We ended up kicking a field goal. We were, we went, we were down 18-10. to 10. So we're only down by eight points going into, the, going into, in, into halftime. I'm thinking to myself, okay, we got to find some adjustments. Unfortunately, in the second half, there was no adjustments that was made. I mean, and all Dallas basically did was kick field goals in the second quarter, in the second half, excuse me. And I'm just going to say something right now. Dwayne Brown needs to be benched. After this game that he had, he needs to go to the bench. We we, we got, we, like, like, uh, there's got to be, an adjustment that needs to change. So, all right, Joe, go ahead. I, listen, it's interesting, Steve. You spit some takes there. I wanna, I'll, I'll go to the Dwayne Brown thing with you. I think it's crazy. Now everybody's calling, <laughs> everybody's calling him for, for him to be benched. Now, I'm, I, you just said he should be benched. I, look, he struggled last week. Michael Parsons, I know, is a handful, but it wasn't just Michael Parsons that was getting after him as well. He was getting beat. There was a lot of pressure in other situations. I said to myself, okay, well, Dwayne Brown is struggling, right? The offensive line is not doing its best. We saw that last week, though, against the Bills, and the Bills have a great defense as well. I was shocked that the New York Jets couldn't run the football either. Like, yeah. I mean – what are your thoughts about that? We didn't have much of anything on the ground. I mean, were you surprised that Brees Hall only had nine yards rushing in this game? No, no, I was very surprised about that and, and, the, and the fact that Brees didn't get a lot of touches in this game. Brees Hall actually said in an interview after the game, he said the main reason why we lost this game today, you want to know what the main reason why was? We did not help Zach. Brees Hall came out and said in the, in the interview okay. – that today yeah. we did not help Zach. Like like yeah. like the offensive line didn't help him. There were times where the mm-hmm. receivers didn't help him. Then there were even at yeah. times like Bre- Brees Hall even said that the team did not deserve to win. And the reason why we lost, why he said why we lost, we did not help Zach today. And, and listen, wow. I know Zach did throw. I know Zach did throw three picks in the fourth quarter. But but the thing he is, is that you know, listen, Zach. Unfortunately, you know, he had to try to find a way to get the team, you know, to the game. And mm-hmm. listen, Zach, I am going to give Zach credit for this. He played with a lot of heart today, despite the fact mm-hmm. that, of how he was getting his butt kicked by the Cowboys defense. Mm-hmm. No, he did. And, and again, I I like Zach Wilson, I, but I'm going to remain critical of him because that's what it is with me. I thought that he could have played a lot. Uh, I think he could have played a bit better in the second half, particularly just not making the big mistake. I understand 
at that point the offense is dead, but just don't throw the interceptions. But I understood – I understand what he was trying to do. I understand he was trying to push – and just get some type of production, get some type of spark. I think that, that especially that interception to, to to Hooker, that he was trying to get to Garrett Wilson, I felt like Garrett could have maybe jumped up and got that. Garrett kind of fell back into it, and I guess he, maybe he didn't see Hooker or whatever it was, but that's how Hooker ended up, uh, Malik Hooker ended up getting the pick there. So, you know, I thought Zach could have played a little bit a little bit better, just not yeah. throwing the interceptions down the stretch. Um, especially that, that one play where he was pumping. He was trying – it was a screen that had got blown up. He should have just thrown that into the dirt, right? He should have thrown that into the dirt. He's got to get that done. Mm-hmm. And, again, I'm I'm a Zach Wilson guy. I like him a lot, but I, I'm going to stay – I stay critical of him yeah. because that's how I stay critical. That's how I do with QBs, all right? I'm going to be critical of him. Yeah. And, um, but I thought, you know he was I thought he was really good in the first half. I thought he was really good in the first half, especially making plays with his feet and uh, extending drives. Go ahead and finish, Steve. Go ahead. Yeah. Say what you got to say. No, no, but here's now the other thing now that I, I am going to say, too, about this game. What, you know hold, on, hold, on, Joe, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Steve. Hold on, Steve. Hold on, Steve. Before you get to your next point, I want to go back to something you were talking about, the offensive line, just really quickly. You said mm-hmm. that Dwayne Brown, you feel like he should be benched and sat down. So you're looking to, for a shakeup along the offensive line. I mean, who who goes to that left tackle position then? If you're looking to bench Dwayne Brown and you think he should be sat down, who's the left tackle? I would try to do is I try to put Sexton at that position, and then maybe what about maybe putting Max Mitchell at the right tackle position? Okay, if that's what you you know, I mean Max Max struggled this this uh, this preseason, you know, at times especially in camp, we saw that, but that's the shakeup that you can make there. Putting Beckton back on that left side, putting Max Mitchell mm-hmm. on that right side. Maybe you could have Billy Turner compete for that right tackle position as well. But it's mm-hmm. very interesting. It's very interesting. You know, again, people are now calling, and we're starting to see it. People are calling uh, for Beckton to start there at left tackle because there was a time where people were saying he should not start at left tackle because Dwayne Brown was coming back. Uh, very interesting. But continue on with your point uh, there, Steve, yeah. and take no, us where no, you were going. Now, Joe, so, yeah, so, Joe, here was the other thing I was going to say. This game, you know, listen, as of right now, Joe, we're only in week number two, okay? This is only the second week of the season. This loss, mm-hmm. like I said earlier on my call, it is not the end of the world on this, on this loss. And, and like I said, this game was a non-conference game. Like, here's the thing. Let's just say New England beats Miami tonight and, every, and everyone in the division is one and one. And the Jets, mm-hmm. I think, would still technically be in first place because we had a divisional win. I mean, obviously, New England would be, would be in first as well. We would, everyone would be tied. But right now, this loss is not the end of the world. We, we, we got to bounce, bounce back. We, we got, we got, the Jets need to regroup, and we're, we're yeah. coming back home, playing against New England. Obviously, we'll see what New England looks like tonight, obviously, against yeah. Miami. And because uh, because I'll be I'll be watching this game I'll be studying the Patriots because obviously we're mm-hmm. gonna we're gonna see what they look like but you know yeah but you know what we, we got we got to bounce back we got to get ready for Week Three at home again against New England yeah absolutely Steve listen Steve I want to thank you for calling in again thank you for giving us that tidbit on what Brees had oh, to say way, that Joe, hey this is we didn't help Zach go ahead Joe well, by the way there was something I wanted to tell you so. If you remember back when when I first met you a few years ago, um, a few years ago, you know, when you used to do the radio show with the other guys, remember how mm-hmm. when you used to hear um, a dog of mine barking in the background? Yeah. Sadly, unfortunately, a couple of weeks ago, my brother and I had to put our dog down, unfortunately. Oh, man. I'm sorry to hear that, Steve. I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm sorry. Yeah, are you so, all right? Are, are you feeling? Yeah, no. Listen, is, listen. Are you everything okay? is okay. Everything is okay. all good, man. It's just I figured I'd let you know because that was the reason why I, I haven't been able to talk to you in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, that's what. Listen, Steve. Take the time that you need. I know that you know family, family pets like that. They definitely you know touch people a different way. And again, you know, rest in peace to your dog. I'm sorry you had to uh, you had to, mm-hmm. to to put that dog down. But you know, the dog's yeah, in the no, as a matter of that's fact, a, that's, the, a, that's the best way to think of it. The other guys who used to do the show with, they felt really bad too, and they sent their condolences too. 
Yeah, absolutely. Condolences. Listen, Steve, again, thank you for calling in. Thank you for giving us that tidbit from Brees Hall talking about, uh, you know, how mm-hmm. they didn't help Zach Wilson. And, again, I want to send my mm-hmm. condolences to you about your dog, man. Man, thank you so much, man. Ha- have a good night, man, and go Jets, okay? All right, you have a good one. Go Jets, man. Go Jets, you know? It's a tough time, but we got to keep it. Keep it. Safe. We're going to keep getting to these lines. G, you are next. We're going to keep getting to these lines. New callers, hold on, okay? I got people in the chat. Savage is in the chat, chat calling me. <laughs> the Savage Bill Nye, the Savage Nerd. Yes, your boy Long Beach Joe knows about some medical stuff, okay? And to go even just a little bit deeper, okay, you can literally program dummy cells uh, from stem cell research. There's a lot of things they're figuring out. It's not a medical channel, but I'm just telling y'all so y'all know. You can program cells scientifically. I don't know how they do it exactly. I don't, you know, but you can code them and program them and uh, tell them what to do. And so because they don't have, like, they don't know what their purpose is, you just tell them this is your purpose within his DNA you're going to be an Achilles, you're going to be part of this muscle, you're going to be part of that muscle, and you shoot them in there, and then they just go do what you told them to do. I'm telling you, modern medicine is its getting crazy. <laughs> it's getting crazy, all right? I love it, you know? It helps people out. A lot of things going on in the world that we can solve uh, medically. So we'll get back to these lines, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in, okay? We'll talk about Aaron Rodgers, you know, throughout this season and what he could possibly do with his Achilles. All right? Next, we're going to go to my guy, GVH. GVH, we're coming directly to you. For those of you that do not know, GVH is a savage. (laughs) G, I'm in the building here, 30 to 10. I'm being called a, a, a... a savage nerd by the chat because mm. I'm talking about mm. stem cell research here. But the Jets have lost mm-hmm. 30 to 10, okay? 30 to 10, G. Yeah. And yeah. I myself was shocked that the Jets defense couldn't really solve the issue that was the Cowboys offense. We only got one sack on Dak. Uh, we couldn't stop them from running. They had over 100 yards on the ground. C.D. Lamb by himself had 143 yards against us and 11 catches. They dominated the time of possession. I think they had 42 minutes. They dominated the time of possession on us. I mean, G, what were your thoughts about what we saw from the Jets' defense today? And are you surprised about how wide open C.D. Lamb was running around? I'm just, I'm just going to throw it all at you, man. Give, give me your thoughts. Hey, Joe, you can hear me, right? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? All right, cool. Yeah, no, nah, you're great. Right here. Oh man, like after hearing all that, like first of all, you get the whole science lesson, so props to you for that. Um, but wow, yeah, <laughs> sadness, <laughs> sadness, like comes through my my head, like you know, as I as I listen to some of that. But I don't, I don't know, man. Like I'm, I'm glad that you're here for us, like you know, all these Sundays for for moments just like this. For any you know Jet fan yeah. out there that's like really concerned, like it's uh, mm-hmm. end of the the second game, you know, <laughs> it's the second game, mm-hmm. we won that Bills game, and, yep. you know, then this happened. It does not look good, but I'm just going to... You're, you're kind of breaking up, G. You're kind of breaking up. I don't know if you can fix your signal or something's going on, but you're kind of breaking up. I'm going to try. Come back to me. But, yeah, no, that's okay. Uh, just kind uh, of fix your signal, uh, your, your signal makes some arrangements. But when, I, I hear what you're saying, and look, I, and I tell people all the time, you know, I'm telling, I've said it constantly throughout the show. It's only week two, okay? It's only week two. Mm-hmm. We're one and one now. There's some things we got to clean up, right? And we all know that. But, man, you know, this was rough, okay? This was rough. And it was rough because we came into this game thinking, the offense with Zach Wilson, is it going to be super limited? No. Nah. There's still some things we can do. Now, is it as great as it was with Aaron Rodgers? No. Okay, that's Aaron Rodgers. Let's mm-hmm. be serious, all right? But still, you know, our offense is going to be – it'll be okay. But our defense, oh, man, we're absolutely going to lean on them because we're missing Aaron Rodgers now. So our defense, top four, they're going to cook. We're going to get after Dak Prescott. Mm-hmm. We're going to 
you know, put the screws to him. There's a ton of sacks. We just oh, had, what, five sacks last week. We're going to get some turnovers. That boy's going to – I talked about it, yep. you know, before the, before, the, before the game. Oh, yeah, we're going to get some turnovers out of Dak. Mm-hmm. We didn't. We didn't get a yeah. uh, soft mm-hmm. drop to pick six. Uh, we got mm-hmm. one sack out of Dak. They ran all over us. <laughs> and then, again, yeah. C.D. Lamb oh. is running. C.D. Lamb, right? C.D. Lamb, the guy that everybody in the world should be identifying – you know what's coming, right? Is, bro, running around wide open, G. <laughs> G, he's mm-hmm. running around mm-hmm. wide open. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just like right crazy. there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, again, give me your thoughts on what you saw. Were you shocked at the lack of adjustments as well? Because it seemed like Albridge didn't figure out that, hey, Dak wants to get the ball out to guys in the flats. Those guys were taking two-yard, you know, catches into 15-yard run. I mean, give me your thoughts about what you saw, man. Yeah. Hey, is the, is the connection better now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's much better, much better. Can you hear? All right, cool. Um, yeah, no, nah, that that opening bit when Dak was 10 for 10, I was like, come on now. Like, this isn't the Dak that I know in the defense that, you know, was playing last week. So, yeah, yeah I mean, you know, at the end, I admit, like, the the, the defense was gassed. Obviously, the sauce could have caught that. Like I, like I put it in the chat, everything would have been different if sauce caught that, but – Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was it was rough, bro. Like, I mean, I I still believe in our defense, but damn, that's a lot of points. And um, yeah. oh, I'm part of me. I didn't mean to curse, but like, but um, like that was that was, geez, yeah, it was rough, bro. Like, I I couldn't mm-hmm. I couldn't believe that. So, but I no, I, yeah, it, it was. I appreciate that you do this like all the time. Like, you listen to this and you go through it. You know, I know you got calls and things and such. Mm-hmm. But it's the the whole yeah. idea that we live this, and and this was the year it was supposed to be all Rogers, right? You know, so I think that that's what yeah. I say, like you know, and you said it too, like it's the second week. Hey, like give it some time to adjust. Now, if we don't start moving towards someone beyond Zach, okay, then you got to mm-hmm. check all of our heads. But it's, uh, wow, yeah, it's, it all comes at us, and we kind of had to know this, right? That's why we're a special bunch. We knew that to see Zach to come in right now and do what he had to do. It was going to be rough mm-hmm. like this, but let's let's hope. And I I know hope is not a strategy, so hopefully JD is doing more than that. But um, let's, yeah, let's try and do what we do. can. But I, I I hear you. Our our defense our defense tried what they could, but I just feel like they were out there for a long time. CBS put up a stat where yeah, it was ridiculous like that. And like and like the previous caller said, that brought in that brief bit, and I, I'm glad he did because I I'm listening to you. Mm-hmm. I'm not listening to CBS. And um, the fact mm-hmm. that Brees, uh, you know, said that they they left plays out there, I trust it on the players more than myself, you know. But my eyes, like that's why yeah. I like that you do this because these are all fans watching this, and you yourself a fan watching this and doing that. And so yep. I just appreciate you, Joe. Like I know you got to get to other yeah, calls. Thank you. I appreciate you and all the seven. No, no, it's okay. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. No, stay with me. Stay with me. It's uh-huh. okay. I want to give you a little little okay. bit more time to stay with me just a little bit. Now we talked okay. about the Jets no defense. Doubt. All right, and I appreciate you. Uh, listen, mm-hmm. we're talking about the Jets' defense here and what they were, what they weren't able to do. And you go over to the offensive side of the ball, right? And we've been talking about mm-hmm. the offense we, ever since Aaron Rodgers has been gone. Look, Zach Wilson, not the greatest quarterback in the league, but he's sufficient. We got to have guys help him out there. We got to yeah. get a solid running game. Well, today, out, he was literally the Jets' leading rusher today. Thirty-six yards on the ground. He's the Jets' mm-hmm. leading rusher. The next rusher mm-hmm. is Brees Hall, who had. Uh, yeah, over 100 yards tough, last man. last week. He only oh. had nine yards mm-hmm. this game, right? Only nine mm-hmm. yards. What are your thoughts about the the fact that the New York Jets couldn't even run the ball against against the Cowboys? I mean, were you sh- shocked about that? My my thoughts, and and I know it sounds crazy. I mean, I don't expect to see nine yards, but my thoughts for real. You had to know that they were ready for like Brees and Dalvin, Fumble yeah. Cooks. So I wanted yeah. them to do better. But you know, you had to know that they were ready for that. They weren't ready for those Zach, you know, that Zach Wilson runs because Lafleur never let him let him run like that. In my mind, like you know, it was just like, look, if it's there, take it because you're athletic. But please slide, mm-hmm. and you did see that he did slide. So props to him. Um, but they were right, and all I'm expecting, I'm all I'm expecting is Bella cheat next week is just gonna be like stack the box, stack the box. It's just gonna be reaching them. So we gotta be ready for that. You know, we gotta be ready yeah. for that because if we're not, it's gonna be a lot more calls like this. So like, and everything yeah. is just gonna be like for real because we've seen this movie before. Nobody's worried yeah. about that. So 
Am I surprised? I didn't think it was going to be nine yards because Brees is a beast, but they they came after him. The same way if you watch the Bills game versus Josh Jacobs, they, they learned their lesson from Brees. Boom, Josh Jacobs was held to like native yards at some point. So, But that's on another story. But, yeah, yeah. it is what I mean, it is. Like, he's got to, he's got to come through. Listen, blown – Gee, I am blown away. <laughs> Nine yards off of four <laughs> carries for Brees Hall. It's, Carter it's not, had eight. Not. Dalvin Cook killed us with a fumble. He had seven yards. It's insanity. Yeah. I, I cannot believe that we those Joe, guys can I say one had, thing? didn't even get double digits. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I just want to say one thing on that because you, uh, you mentioned Cook. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, and I might be wrong on this, but when I was watching it live, it just looked like a face mask was up in there. Like that, he got face masks before yeah, that yeah, happened, yeah. and so I mean, yeah, I know he yeah. lost it. Don't don't get me wrong, but mm-hmm. I'm just like, come on now. But yeah. anyway, yeah, I, I hear you. And and you bring you up a great you, you bring up a great point, G, because I there that was a face uh, that could have been a, a face mask call, absolutely. But there were other calls that were missed that could have went for the New York Jets too, right? Yeah. But clearly, uh, <laughs> all roughing the passer, uh, where I all these ghost calls that we saw as well from the refs. What were your thoughts about some of the home cooking? that Dallas was getting from these referees. Yeah. I mean, it was insane. Those two roughing the passer calls, a, a bunch of other phantom calls as well. How would you feel about that, man? Because that, that, those roughing the passer calls really helped extend the drive where they ended up scoring too. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, got them, got them a two-point conversion and all that. Um, yeah, you know what I, what I say here in the comfort of my own home, but now I'm in front of all the savages, like, how much is Jerry paying? Him? Like you know, when when stuff like that when the stuff like that happens, it's like how much is you know Bob Kraft paying him? Like when calls go against us, I just straight up say like, what's going on there? Because we don't we don't get the call, we don't, and so I just think we just need owners with deep pockets or something. But but that's just me. G said, uh, somebody's opening the wallet. Okay, <laughs> somebody's opening yeah, that wallet. I don't get it. <laughs> my, my next I don't question get it for you. We've been talking uh-huh. to people all night. Right, and uh, there's some people calling for a shakeup along the offensive line. A lot of people talking about Dwayne Brown and what we saw out of him. Give me your thoughts about the offensive line and their struggles tonight as well, mainly Dwayne Brown, who is shaky, baby. Give me your thoughts. 512, I see you, but give me your thoughts. Yeah, no, I hear that. Um, yeah, no, offensive line, we, we knew, and that's what I meant before early in the call, the fact that I talked about, like, you know, this year was about Aaron. It was about Aaron in so many ways, and just the way he can read mm-hmm. an offensive line and knew that he had 2.5 seconds, you know, versus the Dallas D, just like all the other staff nerds, you know, were talking about. And we knew Zach mm-hmm. could do that, but we figured that Aaron could. And so now we're stuck with that again, you know, like the fact that, you know, what separates Zach from so many other quarterbacks is when they get cerebral and they recognize, I only got this much time. Do this, do this. That's what he's, you know, we know he has the the, the, the skill, the arm strength, whatever you want to call that. But it's just a matter of what can another quarterback, and now we're starting to look at backups, but I'm not saying to give up on Zach, but, like, what mm-hmm. what separates that is their ability to recognize Michael Parsons is all-world next version Lawrence Taylor I've got to throw this because he's cutting right up the middle. That's about as much time as I got. And so, mm-hmm. so that's my thought on that. Like the, the Dwayne Brown, I hear, I hear everybody complain about that, but I'm just like, what are y'all going to do? You know, yeah, he might be lost. Mm-hmm. And, but at the same time, you know, third jumps in front of us. So we got to take Will McDonald. What else are we going to mm-hmm. do to, you know, to, to back up? But, you know, Whatever. You know, Mac Mitchell's out there. It's game rough. Too. A lot of people, so it's, a lot it's, of people it's a starting lot to stream from Makai Becton. A lot of people saying put Makai mm-hmm. Becton at left yeah. tackle and uh, all these things. things are, quick, you know, though. I'm just cool. I'm just listening. That's all I do. I just listen mm-hmm. to the savages. That's what I do. That's what I'm here for. Now, before I let you go, G, this yeah. has been a great call from you. Aaron Rodgers, Appreciate a lot of talk about him possibly coming back. He left the door open. A lot of things that he could do treatment-wise. Do you think that's realistic? Dr. LBJ, Bill Nye, I leave that up to you. <laughs> Dr. LBJ, Savage, I leave that You make that decision, and then you tell me we'll talk about it three weeks later, whatever have you. But, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's my thought on that. Like, I have no idea. I mean, I don't understand how this works, bro. Like, <laughs> all right? I, 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 you get me, me personally, I don't you know. Do. He, yeah, he's yeah, 39. I don't, I don't know if he'll do it. I mean, exactly. it, it's tough to exactly. recover. I know all the medical stuff that could happen, but – Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's rough. And then another thing I don't want him to do is push himself to come back and possibly be in a position right. because right. of his age. 
to re-injure that exactly. and then be done the rest of the next season. So that's my thoughts on it, G. Yeah. But I got to slot off, G. Listen, Thanks. this was a phenomenal call from you. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, G. You got some takes, man. Word. Appreciate you, man. You have a good night. All right, you have a good one. Listen, we're going to keep getting to these lines, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. I'm taking all callers. Look into everybody. All right, trust. Dr. LBJ, y'all are crazy. Next, we're going to my guy, Nick. Nick, we're coming directly to you after that. 973, we'll come to you. Nick, salutes. I want to thank you for calling in today. Listen, Nick, Jets lose to the Dallas Cowboys 30-10. to 10. Defense looked uh, like they were getting run ragged out there. What are your thoughts about the performance of our defense and the fact that we only got one sack, Dak Prescott? Nick, 5-1-2, 5-1-2, are you there? Five one two, going once, going yeah. twice. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going back. Hold on, we're going back. We got to go back to five one two, five one two. What's going on? Uh, give me Nick. Give me your thoughts, man. How are you feeling about uh, what we saw? Thirty to. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not Nick. I apologize. Five one two. You're a new caller. Give me your name, where you're from, and give me your thoughts about what we saw from this Jets football team that lost to Dallas Cowboys thirty to ten. Yo. Yeah. Oh, this is Jay Johnson, man. Oh, Jay, what's going on, man? Jay's in the building. Hold on. Jay. What's good? Johnson is a savage. <laughs> Jay, how you going to sneak up in here, bro? Man. Like, get this free, uh, listen, get this free we got therapy session. Mistaken. You, you should have said off the bat, Joe, it's Jay, I'm a savage. What's going on, man? Like, come on, bro. Man. Jay, give me you your thoughts, Nick, man. I'm like, hold up, I'm five one two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. System is all over the place. It, look, we just lost thirty to ten. I, I'm, I'm giving medical advice. I don't know what's happening. All right, give me your thoughts about what you saw from the New York Jets defense today, and the Jets lost thirty to ten, man. Man, listen, I'm not, I'm not putting too much on the defense, man. The defense did what they were supposed to do, man. We can't keep relying on the defense to do everything, man. They did what they were supposed to do. Mm. Like I said, they was playing with handcuffs. They was playing with their hands behind their back. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. So if you're not putting anything on the defense, right, even though C.D. Lamb had 143 yards, we gave up over 100 yards on the ground, right, guys are running wide open. If you're not feeling it's the defense, I'm guessing you're looking at the offense and you're putting some – you're placing the blame squarely on them, am I correct? I mean, it's definition of insanity to think something's going to change and get the same result. You know, I mean, I mean, we ride for Zach. You know, he he under he he under center. You know, we won't ride for whoever's under center. But I mean, it is what it is. I mean, we we, we kind of uh-huh. knew this was going to happen. I was just looking for a competent game, man, and that wasn't it. You know, okay. that wasn't it at all. Okay, so I mean, so who that guy? At- uh huh. So, so when you look at, because you're talking about the Jets' offense right now, right? When you look at what you yeah. saw from Zach Wilson, right? What do you think? So you, you're putting the game on him because you don't feel that he played as well as he should have or could have. But when you look at a lot of the other outside factors, Dwayne Brown, this Jets' offensive line was horrific, right? And we we knew that there were certain things that needed to, have, trash, needed to happen. Been season with the line not being trash. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, and that's where I was going to go as well. We knew that there were certain things that had to happen for Zach to be successful here, and even Brees Hall himself said, we didn't help Zach at all today. That's why we lost. I mean, Brees right, Hall right. by himself only had nine yards. Zach was actually the leading rusher. The Jets' offensive line today, particularly Dwayne Brown, and I don't want to let Lakin Tomlinson off the, off the line either. He was terrible too. He was, he was bad too, okay? So when you look at that and the pressure that's on him, I mean, does that kind of factor in, or did you what what exactly did you want to see Zach do that he didn't do? I mean, I can't even put it all on Zach, man. I mean, Zach did better. You know, he, Zach is definitely different than he was last year. You know, he's playing a little bit with a little bit more confidence or whatever. But uh, I, where was where was the adjustments, man? You know, oh, um, okay. I got, I got to put it on, on, the, on the play calling as well. You know what I mean? Like, okay. The play calling, it just wasn't there, you know. Uh, Zach, Zach did his thing, man. I mean, but what did we really expect for him to do, you know, other than be marginal, you know? Um, yeah. He made he, he made some mistakes. I mean, he, we got three picks, you know. Um, 
he mm-hmm. made some mistakes. But, uh, he could have he could have been better as well. But there, there was no adjustment halftime. I was expecting for them to come out halftime and and come do something. But it, it just yeah. wasn't there, man. It just wasn't yeah. there. No, listen, uh, okay. I'm not surprised by the Look, offensive yeah. line, man. I mean, I seen somebody mm-hmm. in the chat say if it was Rodgers, we would have lost. No, we wouldn't have, man. They would have respected Rodgers a lot more. Come on. Can't rock me to sleep with that. Yeah. They would have no, respected I, I him a lot more. Absolutely. I think, you're, I think you're right there. And I think, uh, you know, one of the things, that was one of the things that we talked about. And, and I talked about this, you know, prior coming into the game was that I felt like the Cowboys were going to do exactly what they did, which was stack the box and put pressure on Zach Wilson and send guys. And they sent Michael Parsons all day long. <laughs> He's that guy, man. He's like that they, guy. I mean, but, every but... play on the outside, he, he, was, he was coming around the bend every single time. And there was like – there seemed to be no, call, no answer for it schematically as well. There were some things I felt like we could have done and maybe take advantage. I think we could have ran some more screens, especially with how aggressive the Cowboys exactly. defense was becoming as the game continued on. And there wasn't much of that exactly. either. So when you talk about lack get of adjustment. Get caught out of the backfield a little bit. Get Brees out of the back hall yeah. a little bit. Something, some sort of adjustment. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Cowboys did it. You know, they knew the two players yep. they had to look out for was Brees and Wilson. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and and they did their job with that. So we, did, we didn't do the same. No. Yeah. I mean, you're talking fast. My final question for you, Jay, because you, you're bringing the fire right now. And, again, I want to thank you for giving to the platform as well with your donation. Yeah, man, that's all I got, man, for the therapy session. (laughs) Thank you kindly. All right. Give me your thoughts about uh, these referees, man, because the Dallas Cowboys were getting calls that I I didn't think was real. Give me your thoughts, man. Man, like I said, I'm out here in Texas, so I know how Jerry get down, man. Jerry part of the mob. Uh, (laughs) Jerry, Jerry that guy, man. Jerry, that oh. guy. I knew <laughs> first on, quarter. What it, I knew. I knew first quarter what it was, man. Like that is just like uh, just. I mean, you put hands on, on that pressure bus pipes. You know what I'm saying? And, and they knew that, and they 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 sm- uh, they smashed that fire out quick. Way in the first quarter, yeah. you know, because we were getting yeah. to them. Like yeah, everybody talking about our defense wasn't. You know, our defense was getting to them. We had a lot of critical stops. A lot of good stops, uh-huh. but they 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 uh they smashed that fire out real quick with us. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and the the, yeah. the momentum swing, like I mean, what they gonna do? They know they can't touch him. Yeah. We couldn't even breathe on the quarterback. Like, come on, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, I'm hot this pistol over here, man. I'm calling in to work <laughs> tomorrow because I mean, I already know how it's gonna go. Yo, listen, <laughs> first person, <laughs> first person approach me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, don't, don't, Yo, don't, shout don't out to all the savages out in, the, in the chat, man. It's my first time calling in. <laughs> Thank you for calling in. Before I let you go, Aaron Rodgers went on Pat McAfee, talked about possibly returning to the New York Jets this season from the Achilles. Do you think that's realistic? Do you think it'll happen? Man, you need to simmer down, man. Go ahead and heal up, man. <laughs> I, I took the fell, fell the other day, uh, like two weeks ago, and my joints still hurt. Like, come on, man. I'm 38. Uh, you need to sit down, go ahead and heal up, you know what I mean, because we need you next year. <laughs> Jay, listen, I want to thank you for calling in. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you more often, Jay. We see you. You a savage. We see you in the chat. You go off. We go back and forth. Jay, I want to, I need you calling in more. All right, All right man? Already. Already. <laughs> All right, you have a good one, Jay. <laughs> listen, Jay Johnson said it straight out. You know, he thinks, you know, Jerry – it, I, look, I didn't say nothing, okay? I don't want them people looking at me, okay? I'm just a citizen, okay? <laughs> don't be looking at me for nothing. I didn't say nothing. I just, you know, I just realized, you know, these referees is a little little shaky in Dallas, okay? <laughs> I want to take GVH with a big, 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 big donation. <laughs> I want to thank GVH with the big, 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 big donation. GVH says, Joe, helping us through it all. Thank you so much, G. I appreciate you with the big donation, man. I appreciate it. It shows off the rails, man. Everybody's mad. I understand, you know. But, again, we wanted one, okay? We got to – it's a long road ahead of us. 
We got a long road, baby. All right? It's not over. But we got to clean some things up because if we don't clean some things up, we're going to get cleaned up. We're going to keep getting to these lines, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Next. We're going to 973. 973, we're coming directly to you, okay? We're coming directly to you, Val. Thanks, Jeff. 973, we're coming directly to you. Salutes, I want to thank you for calling in tonight. Jets lose to the Dallas Cowboys 30 to 10. What are your thoughts on what you saw from not the New York not Jets offense? Not surprised at all. Oh, offense, not, okay. What all? Okay. With weak I mean, our offense was bad that week. Our defense was bad. But, you know, I wasn't surprised by this at all. I mean, I knew going to Dallas they were going to have a lot of problems, especially since you got Zachy Boy not taking with your quarterback. And if you think he's our man that's going to get us through this season, uh-uh. No. No. Boy would be a much better, would have been a much better choice to start as quarterback than, say, Wilson. Because Wilson is terrible as a starter. 8-14 and 14 mm. in his two seasons here. Uh, last, uh, the last, last season uh, he was off the – Roster twice. Seriously, you want to go with him? He's a clown. No, thank you. Mm. Boyle would have been your better shot. Okay. Or if you have been smart, you want to trade Mike White. I think he might have done better with Mike uh, White. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you did, yeah, you did, yeah, we didn't yeah, trade. Right? We we didn't trade. We didn't trade Mike White, but uh, he know, he ended well, up left. signing with. Yeah, yeah, he left and he he went to the Dolphins. But here here's the deal, and I hear what yeah. you're saying. All right, Zach, Zach did throw three interceptions, but I thought the yeah, first yeah. half he looked phenomenal. I thought the first half he looked really good. The second half was when things really, you know, the wheels kind of fell off. He started to play hero ball. Oh, yeah. But when you look at what was around him today, right, we knew that the, the mm-hmm. offense was more limited with Zach than it was with Aaron Rodgers. We all know that, okay? Yep. Nobody's arguing yep. that, all right? With Aaron Rodgers, everything is wide open. We can do it all, okay? But with Zach Wilson, we got to rein things in a bit. And today, what I was surprised mm-hmm. by was the fact that we could not run the football. Brees Hall only had nine yards. I think yeah. uh, Dalvin Cook. Uh, I think Dalvin Cook had like a uh, uh, Carter had eight yards. Dalvin Cook had seven. He had a big fumble as well that hurt us and killed us. I mean, we couldn't run the ball, right? The offensive line struggled as well, right. especially guys like Dwayne Brown and Lakin Thomason. So when you look at uh, and I'm gonna and Lakin Thomason, I'm gonna say that again. So when you look at these struggles around them, right, around Zach Wilson, can you really put it all on him? I mean, listen to Brees Hall. Brees Hall came out, according, again, we had a caller earlier, I believe it was Steve, that, that broke it for yeah. us because, again, we're here live after the game. And Brees Hall said it flat out. We didn't win this game because we didn't do anything to help Zach Wilson. We didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. So can you yeah, really put it on sure, Zach Wilson but, when well, you look at all these other factors? Like Give me your thoughts. Yeah, okay, maybe it isn't all else's fault, but he hasn't helped us much either. You know, last season when he got in, when he got injured twice and then off the roster, it didn't help our game. And, you know, I think, you know, with Rodgers now with that injury, I think they really, you know, uh, sent, sent back a bit. All the hype that was surrounding Rodgers uh, this year coming to the Jets and hopefully we're going to have a tremendous season, I mean, that kind of fell flat. You know, as, as yeah. that. but I still wasn't thinking Wilson, you know, was going to carry us through. In fact, I was predicting he was going to get injured, you know, by by maybe mid the four mid season guy here. I don't trust wow. the quarterback. I really don't. Well, you know, I understand you don't trust him at quarterback, and a lot of people want uh, different names. And there's, you know, there's guys out yeah. there, Colt McCoy, and some of the some of the names. But I don't think those guys are going to be able McCoy. to come in here and learn the offense quickly and build rapport and chemistry with the guys. If that was true, the Jets would have already, you know, went and grabbed one of those guys to come into the building. Sella has said, mm-hmm. we are going forward with Zach Wilson. He is our quarterback. And that's what they're going to do. Unless, excuse me, it falls completely off the rails. Now I'm saying completely off the rails with Zach Wilson. He's going to be our starter going forward. Now, Tim Boyle could be a guy to step in. And I heard you mm-hmm. talk about Tim Boyle earlier, but he looked like trash in preseason. He was awful in preseason. Zach was better than him in preseason by far. It wasn't even close. That's how Zach Wilson got that second, uh, that that number two quarterback spot. So I hear what you're saying. I just don't, you know, I just don't think there's any names out there that are going to come in and significantly make us better. Trust me. 
Because if there were, I'd be screaming for it myself. Mm-hmm. All right? Right. Yeah, I don't think you'll find a guy that's more hurt about Aaron Rodgers being hurt than me. I love Aaron Rodgers. I'm a Jets fan through and through, but I love Aaron Rodgers. But he's gone. And we'll see what happens yeah. with him going on in the future. But it is what it is. We're going forward with Zach Wilson. But I want to get back to this game with you. And I want to talk to you yeah. about these referees. What are your thoughts about the calls, some of the phantom calls that we saw, roughing the passers? Well, <laughs> Yes, the rest of the pass again. calls against the Jets, all this stuff. What are your thoughts about some of the bad calls that the Jets got? The referees are blinding his bats in the NFL, and they know it, but they just want to admit, you know, sometimes that's how the team loses because the referees make stupid calls. But then again, what else is there? They've been making stupid calls for years. Some people, and they get and they get paid to do it. But uh, if you guys yeah. keep calling your calls yeah. wrong, I mean, you, you mm-hmm. would call yourself professionals, you people are stupid. I mean, I can think I get better calls than some of these referees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, My it, was, can do it, it was rough. It was rough. I could be. I could be a better ref. I think I could step in there yeah. and put on that uh that striped shirt and make people. some better calls. Yeah, I'll be fair. I'll be fair. You know. You know, I'll be fair. Yeah. At least fairer than they were. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. yeah. Holla at me. They, you know. So before I let be you fair. go. Yeah. Before I let you go, nine seven three. Aaron Rodgers talked to, uh, you know, McAfee. There's, I guess mm-hmm. he left it. I mean, he did. He left the door open to possibly return this, you know, season. Do you think that? Uh, do you think that that's actually a possibility? And do you think it'll actually happen? I seriously doubt it. I mean, at his age, with his devastating injury, don't forget, with a torn ACL and with a torn, uh, that's going to take a lot of time to heal. So I don't think that, you know. It's possible. I don't think it's even safe for him to come back this season. If he was mm. younger, yeah, maybe, maybe like about maybe ten years ago when he was still in his prime, yes. But now that he's almost almost like a dinosaur, you know, pushing uh, let me see, thirty nine in human years, that would be about sixty three mm. in uh, football years. Uh, no, I would say forget it. And I don't okay. know if he'll come yeah. back next year. I mean, you know, he's getting to that age where most uh, you know quarterbacks are in the retirement stage, so. It's going to be very difficult to, you know, even come back from this. Yeah. I wish him luck, though. Uh, it's, it's going to be rough. Listen, I want to thank you for calling in, yeah. 973. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, all right? All right. I hope you can call into my show on Saturdays. Absolutely. Hey, give us give us your uh, give us your spill on your show, man. Certainly. It's called Aaron Rodgers is a goner. No, uh, it's called the Enhanced Sports Show. <laughs> the Enhanced Sports Show. We're on Saturdays, 4 to 6 p.m. And it's a live show. It's a live podcast, like you. Uh, I have a call in number. It's 512-543-4662. Again, 512-543-4662. We handle almost everything in the world of sports, uh, even sometimes the um, stuff that I mean, nobody really cares about, except maybe me. Uh, <laughs> Namely, like uh, MLS and WNBA, uh, we care. We can watch all sports and everything. It's a live, it's a live call and show. I'm also available on YouTube. Uh, you can go into YouTube and dial in the Enhanced Sports Show, and you'll see uh, this week's show in its entirety. Although you won't hear your voice through the replay, you have to call in live to hear your voice. But um, it's really been a fun show. I've been the host now six years, still going strong, and you know I love to get as many people in as possible. So if you've got time between four and right. Saturday, give the call. All right. Listen, I want to thank you for calling in. we got to slide off. Salute. We're going to keep getting to these lines, 515-602-9639. show is off the rails, okay? <laughs> I'm being called a doctor and a nerd in the chat because <laughs> <laughs> referee Joe, that's coming in in the building soon, okay? LBJ referee, I see that coming soon next we're going to 415 jeremy is in the building jeremy 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 before we even let jeremy talk just know jeremy he's a savage (laughs) jeremy the new york jets lost to the dallas cowboys okay 30 to 10 people are losing their minds I'm being called a nerd and a doctor <laughs> in the chat. Uh, and people are very upset about what they saw today uh, from the Jets' defense. Give me your thoughts 
on the Jets' defensive struggles. Are you su- are you surprised that we only got one sack on Dak Prescott that they ran for over 100 yards on us, that C.D. Lamb had 143 yards by himself and seemed to be able to run around in the Jets' defense completely uncovered at times. What do you make of what you saw today from the breakdowns within the Jets' defense? Well, the the defensive line did not um, show up. The defensive line did not show up today. Not enough, considering the resources we put into it. We put in a tremendous amount of resources into this defensive line, and it just is not good enough. The, um, oh, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, I mean, just Dak had, to, Dak had way too much time. We're just, you know, we get a lot of pressure. We push guys back, but we're just not finishing plays. It's like Carl mm-hmm. Lawson his whole career. is just like great disruptor, you know, great at getting back there, can't finish. And it's – it was making me think the whole game, should Will McDonald be the guy that's inactive? You know, maybe, maybe yeah. it's like we need to rethink that and, and you know, and start thinking about what we're going to do. Because I feel like we have a lot of really good defensive linemen, yes, but we don't have that guy. We don't have the, the Parsons. We don't have the Bosa. We just don't have that guy, that closer, that just does it play after play. I mean, we have it a little bit in the middle with Quinnen, who's fantastic. But on the edge, mm-hmm. who's that guy? Who's going to step up and be the guy that other teams fear? Because we have a lot of well, guys, it, but guess what? You can only play two of mm-hmm. them at a time. Yeah. But wasn't, wasn't, wasn't that, like, supposed to be the strength of the Jets' defense? I'm just reiterating what I heard coming into yeah. the season we talked about, that we had multiple guys that could put things together. You know, And I want to keep in mind this is – this is, you know, we lost 30 to 10, but this is one game, and this is a Dallas, you know, Cowboy football team that is that is good. They're very good, and they have a phenomenal offensive line as well. But we have waves of guys, right? We got Bryce Huff, we got Jermaine Johnson, we got, uh, you know, Carl Lawson, we got Quentin Williams, who's literally an All-Pro Pro Bowler. Like we got guys, you know, that can really handle things, right? But we just couldn't get to Dak this week. And it just – it was mind-boggling to me that we couldn't do that. And, and not only that we couldn't get to him with our front four, but then I felt like a lot of times our defensive play calling wasn't adjusting properly to what the Cowboys were doing, right? Their game plan was very simple, okay? It was – I mean, not super simple, but we saw them come out. It was a lot of getting the ball out of Dak's hands very quick. They were also running quick as well, a lot of no huddle, especially early in the game. They ran a lot of no huddle in the game where they were gassing our defensive line. They were gassing our defense. That's why I think that our defense was so gassed going on later on in the game as well because they had been out there for quite a bit and they were getting ran around. So I think that that hurt us too. And the lack of adjustments to those things really hurt us as well. So, Give me your thoughts about how we didn't adjust our defensive game plan to what they were doing because we saw them, you know, throwing throwing screens. We were getting cooked, you know, those those, uh, those uh, short passes in the flats. Those guys were picking up 15 yards. There were guys running around wide open. Don't you think that that was an issue as well, our defensive game plan didn't adjust? No, absolutely. Absolutely. Because usually in the second half we come out a lot stronger and a lot better. And it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. It was like, look, I mean, there were two times we had third and 17. Both times we ran the ball and gave up. They had third and 15. They completed a 16-yard pass. So it's like they're the adults and we're the children. We're sitting there and still doing the things we did when we were the worst team in the NFL. The worst team in the NFL. Third and long, give up. Mm. Do some short play so we can punt the ball mm. while they're being a championship-level team. Third and 15, they're mm. finding a way to get the first down. We're just not doing it. Mm. Um, my, yeah. my, the most annoyed I was at this game was we clearly are stronger on the right side of the offensive line for the running game than the left side. It seems like eighty percent of the running plays were eighty percent of the running plays were the left side. We're running away mm. from our strength. It makes no sense. Mm. Yeah, I mean it, it was it was rough. It was rough. And when you talk about the offensive line, we go to the offensive side. A lot of people are trying to are saying that this loss is squarely on the shoulders of Zach Wilson. What are your thoughts about that, especially when Brees Hall comes out and says that uh, the reason why we lost is because we didn't help Zach today? How do you feel about that, man? 
Yeah, no, I didn't think it was Zach at all. I mean, the fourth quarter, though, I don't care about those two interceptions. They were meaningless. We really lost the game at that point. We did not help Zach mm-hmm. Wilson. What chance did we give him? He was actually making a lot of good passes and doing a lot of things right. A couple of bad drops. You know, mm-hmm. um, there were a couple of bad things that happened. But he actually made some really good plays. Um, mm-hmm. We didn't do our job for, for our quarterback. We didn't lift our quarterback. Our, Dwayne Brown, Lakin mm-hmm. Tomlinson, did they do anything to help their mm-hmm. quarterback? They were horrendous. Yes. They were so bad yeah. today. Like, Dwayne Brown was just – I mean, he looked like a guy that should have been re- should have retired last year, to be mm-hmm. honest. Yeah. And Lakin Tomlinson looks like the guy who played for the Detroit Lions and not the guy who ever played for the 49ers. <laughs> I mean, he looks he looks bad he looked bad today. He looked absolutely bad. So my final question again, uh, Vox raid Vox raided me. I want to thank him for doing that. The chat's going crazy while we're doing here on a live radio show. I want to thank everybody for joining me and everybody for subbing. We'll get to you guys in just a second before I'm going to close this out with Jeremy here. Listen, we, we talked about the offense. We, we talked about the struggles there and struggles running the football. Give me your thoughts about this, uh, the um, referees, because there were some calls, Jeremy, that were very suspect. What were your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to use it as an excuse for the loss per se, you know, because – there's still a lot of things we have to address and focus on. We can't control what mm-hmm. the referees do, but there's definitely a bias against us and against certain quarterbacks and, and others get help that, you know, I mean, we, we, we've watched Zach get hit helmet to helmet late and mm-hmm. nothing has been called. And both of those, yeah. both of those rough in the passer call, calls were completely ridiculous. You know, JFM mm-hmm. was literally in midair, hit him above the knee in midair, like after he released the ball, there was nothing he could do about the, uh, that. And the second call was even worse. I mean, it's like, what are mm-hmm. they doing a football? I mean, the guy releases the football as the guy's hitting him. You can't call a flag on that. A late hit is when you clearly have enough time to divert and not hit the quarterback. In both those cases, mm-hmm. there was nothing those defenders could have done to not hit the quarterback. They were already committed to their motion. You know, they were already, like, literally off their feet making the tackle against the quarterback, like, you know, moving in on that hit. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know what the expectation is. is. The expectation is like a punter, like you pull back on the sack if you think he's going to throw the ball. I mean, that's going to kill football. Mm-hmm. So those were horrendous calls. They were really, really bad. But at the end of the day, it's not an excuse. That's because we have to focus on what, you know, how we're going to fix the offensive line. Hopefully mm-hmm. the offensive line shows up next week. Because we could erase this with a win in New England, or against New England at home, yeah. right? We, we come home and we beat New England, all this goes away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. Jeremy, I got to slide off. Listen, I want to thank you for calling in. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, man. I love going back and forth with you and listening to what you have to say about the Jets, all right? Oh, my pleasure, man. And shout out to Rusty Spooner, too. Uh, he's my boy. Yeah, absolutely. That's that guy, man. Salute. And, again, thank you for calling in, Jeremy. Listen, first of all, there's so many things happening right now and going on. It's a live radio show. I want to thank, I think, Vox Lombardi. Vox Lombardi for coming in, for raiding your boy. Salutes. Uh, my, my chat and is going crazy. My channel is full of Cowboys fans right now. Salutes and respect to all of y'all, okay? We have a lot of fun. Please subscribe. I have people that, that listen and watch your boy that are not even Jets fans, and I appreciate y'all. Uh, to the big, 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 big donations, though, okay? <laughs> Adrian Lindsley, I want to thank you for the big, 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 big donation. He said no adjustment could uh, could save the Jets against the boys. Okay, you believe that. I want to thank you for the big, 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 big donation. Also, Sadat Kent Miss Arthur, I want to thank you for the big, 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 big donation. He says, Vox Rage, salutes. Thank you for the big, 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 big donation. <laughs> so many things moving and shaking, man. I want to thank y'all again for raiding your boy. It's a live radio show. I know y'all may not, you know, know that where y'all are coming from, but we sit here, we talk Jets, and we have a lot of fun. Welcome to the channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so when I post content, you'll be in the know. Let's go back and forth. You guys are welcomed on in, okay? Don't get too crazy. I'm too crazy on the Jets in the chat. It was a tough loss today, but, uh, you know, you guys, you, the Cowboys played all right. You played well, okay? 
Rest definitely help you guys, all right? But we're going to keep getting to these lines again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We're taking all callers. Next, we're going to my guy, Truth. Truth, we're coming directly to you. For those of you that do not know, this man, Truth, oh, he's a sad <laughs> We're getting short on time. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Listen, we got a uh, <sighs> we lose to the Dallas Cowboys thirty to ten. Give me your thoughts on this situation, man. Well, uh, Joe, I'm staying with so uh I'm going down here. I didn't think I was gonna get on that fast, but let me uh start off by saying that I thought the way the game plan was, was drawn perfectly. Mm-hmm. I didn't want, I said last week, I didn't want Brees to run over a certain amount of times. He did it. I felt like you didn't need to see the three tight ends. I think, I feel like everything is being set up for this new week, which it, it, it mm-hmm. should. Like, so I'm not mad about anything really in particular, except for maybe just the defensive line. I feel like the defensive line really didn't do well. I don't. I don't plan on Dalvin Cook being the starter for very long. So I don't care. Like you're gonna see us with Brees Hall. Hopefully, a, a, a healthy Brees Hall, and that's what's gonna matter. Right now, you guys playing mm-hmm. us like for our best running back. That's fine. But he's a playmaker. The first run he ran it was like nine yards to the sideline. Mm-hmm. Like this is him coming off of a uh, major <laughs> injury. Like I, I'm amazed that he can even do all this stuff. So. Also, but the Zach Wilson situation, I love the fact that they allowed him to kind of like go into like the five receiver set and they let it, they just let it air out today. And I think he actually answered mm-hmm. a lot of good questions, except for that last interception that Diggs I don't like because he overthrew. And that's not what we want to see you even doing once again. But other than that, if you, if, if, if the defender doesn't um, hit his arm on that one play with Garrett Wilson, like juke, Diggs or whoever he did on the on the left side of the field, that could have been a touchdown. Yeah. And then if Sauce yep. gets the interception, this 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 could be a totally. I'm not saying we're gonna win Different the game, game, but for not for mm-hmm. for I think to, this game was from the coaching um standpoint it was like we're just gonna try to progress Zach Wilson as much as possible. Can he throw the ball deep? He threw a couple nice passes. Like, uh, yeah, one guy mm-hmm. intercepted because he kind of did the pump fake when he didn't need to, but I understood what he was trying to do. He was trying to get the safety to come up a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. But at, at the end of the day, he showed so much more improvement in these, re- in these couple of games, just being able to throw the ball short. Like, last year, mm-hmm. if he throws the ball short the way he did in, against Buffalo, um, we, go, we might be going to the playoffs with that just that type of quarterback play. Like, for him to just take those type of Leaves and bounds. I like. I, I want to see. I I want to see against New England. This is the test. This is like no excuses. You cannot. You cannot throw three picks, two picks, uh, and, mm-hmm. and, and throw the game away. I don't care what the offensive line is doing. I I I really believe they're going to run the ball a lot more. I think we're going to see a lot more breeze this week because this is. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he'll definitely get to like that ten to fifteen carry, uh, like situation where. He's going to make a lot of plays for us. And New England's going to have to see the three tight ends, the the full mm-hmm. – um, they're going to get the full onslaught. Like, uh, I think the Jets held back a lot, and I think that was the right choice. I said that last week where I felt like this is the perfect game to kind of get – to see what Zach can do. And I think he made a couple passes that were so close that we, you're like, yo, bro, you're almost there. If you could just take the next little step, I feel like mm-hmm. – we we are going to be a playoff team. I'm not sure about a Super Bowl team. I I don't know how that's going to yeah. work out, but definitely I, I mean, a playoff I, I don't team. Know. I yeah, I, I, truth, I, I hear you. I don't think the Jets held back. I think we I think we were trying. We absolutely were trying, but I think it was a lack of adjustment. I think the running game wasn't working. Okay. Brees Hall only getting nine yards in this game. That's mm-hmm. insane. We've mm-hmm. talked about it ever since Let we me lost Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Hey, look. Uh, hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. Ever since we lost Aaron Rodgers, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. hey, our running game has to be there. Our running game has to step up. Mm-hmm. Our running game has to be a focal point. We have mm-hmm. to ground and pound, right? We have to do that. We all mm-hmm. talked about that. We all knew that. And then Absolutely. things would open up for Zach Wilson down the stretch. None of that happened today. Mm-hmm. Zach Wilson was actually our leading rusher with 36 yards. 
Mm-hmm. And it was, he made a lot of critical, a lot now, of critical he, runs. Now do the math. A, a lot okay. of critical mm-hmm. runs going towards going mm-hmm. towards the end of the second quarter, um, before mm-hmm. the half. A lot of critical runs to help extend that drive. So we tried to run mm-hmm. the football. We couldn't. We couldn't do it, and then the okay. offense uh, and then the defense. We literally give me, give me your final okay. thoughts quickly. Mm-hmm. Real quick, real quick. I'm going to answer a couple of these. I got to answer a couple of these questions real quick. Okay, first off, we ran to the left. I feel like six. I want to look at the numbers, but I feel like it was over 50 percent of the time we were running to the left. When clearly last week the right side was the dominant side of the offensive line. Okay. Other than mm-hmm. that, also, um, I believe that they also tried things like why would you go into a five receiver or a five split out? right, and nothing in the background, and you have a, a possible blitz or whatever, but you're not double-teaming mm-hmm. Micah, you're allowing, I just felt Brother. like, I, I really felt like this was, I feel like this is being matched by, not only by uh, Sala, but by Joe Douglas, I feel Joe Douglas is very involved, and I just feel like yeah. they got this right, man, I really feel like they got this right, they get this quarterback thing down to a, a top 18 guy, uh, um, this guy, this team is going to be really nasty, man. And I yeah. just, like I said, the defensive line was a little uh, disappointing. Um, fine, I don't even care. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just thought it was very weird that they didn't double CD at all. They didn't, like, they just allow CD to just yeah. go wild. Like, hey, go ahead. Yeah. No, but that's not, that's not as a, He's a decent a genius, but you think he can't really make those. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you right now, everybody who's listening, New England's gonna feel it next week. I really feel it, man. I feel like I feel like Zach is gonna have a two forty, two twenty, two forty week, but he's also gonna run for like forty. Hall's gonna get at least seventy, and I think Cooks will get me at least twenty and thirty, and we're running like at one thirty as a team. And I think mm-hmm. you're not gonna be able to beat us because our defense is gonna be able to rest, and it's gonna be. We'll see. We'll see. I'm excited for. This All week right. already. I'm really excited All for this week coming up. Listen, Truth. Well, I appreciate said, the listen, it was, was, let me He says, listen, the past in the past, I'm moving on. Listen, Truth, I want to thank you for calling in. You have a good one, my friend. Listen, I hear it. I, we tried. Trust me. The New York Jets tried, okay, today. But the uh, the Cowboys just – Micah Parsons, our inability to stop him, or even – there's there's things we should have done game plan-wise to constantly account for Micah Parsons. Constantly. And again, the answer, Dwayne Brown couldn't block him. <laughs> and it's interesting. A lot of people now calling for the New York Jets to shake up their offensive line after seeing Brown, you know, stumble two weeks in a row. <sighs> this is, this is, you know, it's a tough situation, but again, New York Jets are one and one. We'll see what happens going forward. So we're going to short on time. and we'll close out the show. This has been a hot show, man. <laughs> this has been a hot show. Again, I want to thank, Vouch Lombardi for the raid again. People were going crazy in here while we were uh, talking about, uh, you know, <laughs> football and having a blast. Salute to everybody that came on by from that raid. I appreciate all of you. <sighs> Listen, I'm going to close the show out. I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me shamelessly promote my Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search The Long Beach Joe Show. Like that page. My content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message me. I'll message you right back. I love going back and forth with you folks about this football team. Also, leave me some feedback. I love hearing about what you folks think I do here on The Long Beach Joe Show. All right, your boy's also on Twitter as well. Go on over to Twitter. Type in at The Long Beach Joe, at The Long Beach Joe on Twitter. Follow your boy. I'll follow you right back. And if you don't troll me, no issues. I am the troll that lives under the bridge, and I will have my Vera Tucker jersey on at all times. At all times, okay? This offensive line has got to step it up, man. We were struggling, you know? Vera Tucker's looking all right, but things could be better. You know what I'm saying? But that's what we do at SC. We get better. We take the next step. Fight on, okay? Also, I'm on YouTube as well. Come on over to YouTube, type in Long Beach Joe Jets, Long Beach Joe Jets on YouTube. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so when I post content, you will be in the know. All right? Appreciate y'all. If you want to troll me, get in the comments of those videos and troll me as well. I enjoy going back and forth with people and trolling, okay? So with all that said, after a tough loss, when you see me in person because you will see me in person eventually, I, okay, 
I'll for free hugs, man. Free hugs for everyone. Arms out, chest open. Free hugs for everybody, all right? The hugs will cost you absolutely nothing, no matter what anyone tells you. The hugs will always remain free. I want to thank you folks for listening. I want to thank you folks for calling in. Salutes to everybody again that came through with the raid. It's a tough situation, but the New York Jets, we're going to bounce back. Season's not over, all right? We're one and one, and we got a lot of things moving and shaking. So I'll see you folks. I'll see you folks on the next show. Peace.